Preparing to delve in three, two, one. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Delve. My name is Nathan, and yes, it has probably been a little while since you have heard from me or anyone over here at Delve. Uh, there were a couple reasons for that. Uh, one of the first ones was we had just done a bunch of episodes. Uh, the last one was about fatigue, and uh, then we did a very long live episode where we even discussed it a little bit further. And if you listen to the end of that particular episode, you would know that uh, Alex had kind of floated the idea, maybe you just take some time off. And I guess I did without really planning on it and then didn't mention it to anyone that I was probably gonna just take a little bit of time. I guess the reason why I didn't originally mention that was because uh, something else happened in the meantime where a wind blew through my home and uh, knocked a whole bunch of trees down, taking a, a good chunk out of our garage, uh, completely decimating my arbors, and uh, also totaling my car. So been trying to deal with some of that uh obviously a lot of yard work that's involved with it uh cutting up trees moving the brush off finding out that oh wow our yard is a lot larger now uh you know a whole bunch of things like that and of course now really thinking about uh car shopping which is something i have to do now and how to get rid of stumps there's a lot of things going on, and so I had not really made a priority out of doing a Delve episode during that time. And that got me to thinking about a subject that I really wanted to talk about anyway, and so I thought I would do a short episode now. One, to let you know that yes, we are indeed alive. At least I am. I haven't checked on Alex lately. And two, to talk about priorities. Now, of course, I would not suggest talking about the priorities between real life and fiction, because obviously fiction is going to win every single time. Now, what I'm talking about is the priorities of work, especially when you end up with a lot of projects that you want to do and you have every intention of doing, but you don't know when you're going to be able to schedule them all. What happens to me more often than not is I will have entire lists of things that I would really like to do, and then it's about trying to budget that time to figure out when I'm going to be able to do any of those things. But the problem that I often find, and I, I don't know if anybody else experiences this, but I feel like it is a, a common problem among people who have creative endeavors is uh, you want to do all of those at the same time, and you are going to try to work on all of those things at the same time. Instead of trying to prioritize them into what is most important to you and what is least important to you. There is also the factor that often comes into play about what you think is going to register the best. For instance, a little while ago, I released a video that was about Borderlands 3 and a stupid thing that I did, and uh, I actually got a lot of response back and realized that there was a follow-up video that I really should do about Borderlands 3 that is also an even stupider thing that I could do, but I haven't made that video yet, because even though I know that that would go over very well, and apparently there is indeed a market for it, I just have not been very interested in making that video. Uh, so there's also a priority between whether I want to actually do something or if other people would like me to do it. And a lot of times, uh, for people who really want to get out there, you would be forgiven for taking the opportunity to do the thing that you think is going to have the best exposure and the best reaction. And that is a very big drive. But then again, I've done a lot of projects where I was like, oh, I'm not really doing this because I want to do it, but I figured that this is going to be a very marketable thing for me to do. And then it just falls flat. So it's kind of hard to judge one way or the other. Uh, you think to yourself like, well, if I just throw everything against a wall, something is going to stick. And then obviously the thing that sticks is the thing that we will stick with. It gets into a, a habit where you figure, well, I, I, I guess what I could do is I could just throw everything at the wall. 
But then how long are you going to throw it at the wall? You know, how long are you going to continually throw everything at that wall? And if you get into a habit of trying to throw everything at that wall and you don't know when to stop, the problem becomes that you are just going to have more and more stuff that you're throwing at the wall and you will have a wall full of stuff. There's just so much spaghetti on that wall now. And you don't know how it got there, <laughs> but you can't stop throwing it. And you're going to run out of momentum, speed, and interest of throwing anything at that wall at all. Imagine it this way. If you have 10 things you know you want to do, you can order them by the priorities that you would like to get to first, second, third, fourth, fifth, all the way down your list which would be a healthy way to look at it and also would help you with budgeting time. Or you could do it the way I do it. Say, let me try to do all 10 things at once until it becomes exertive and I don't know how I'm ever going to do them because now they're not 10 individual projects. They're one large project that is the entirety of my work. And then it feels like you can never get it done because it is a Sisyphean task that you have placed before yourself. Now, you can hold on to that for a while, managing multiple projects and trying to do them all in, in a timely fashion until the world throws a tree on top of your car. Now, it's at that point where it's easy to shut down because your priorities have now become, there's a tree on my car. Not that I'm speaking from any personal experience. I'm just throwing that out as an example. And so you don't really know what else you want to do or what you should be focusing on. And you've been trying to focus on so many things that you really have no focus whatsoever. So in order to help with this, I, I started looking up a little bit about prioritizing work. And uh, just, just briefly, because I was wondering if maybe they had some ideas for me, and I realized that a lot of it is actually very similar advice and pretty much stuff that I already have been thinking about. One, which is the idea of actually listing your tasks. A list of your tasks is going to basically just lay out what you have in front of you. And from there, you can visualize it better. Once you can visualize what you have in front of you, it's going to make it a lot easier to figure out what you do with all of those parts and pieces. Something that I had not thought about, but then I saw it on a lot of blogs, so apparently this is a very common thing, is to identify uh, important versus urgent. The reason why you need to do that is to understand if there's something that you need to do basically right this moment or in the very near future, or if it's something that might be an important thing to do, but you don't really have a time frame on it. So an urgent thing for me was when I recently did that uh, Ghost of Tsushima video. I think that that was probably the, the one thing where I was like, oh no, it comes out here. I obviously have to get it out ahead of that because otherwise, uh, you know, what, what am I doing? Uh, so I got to get that out the door as fast as possible. So that's considered an urgent. If it wasn't for the fact that I'm looking at that time frame, I would have probably just said that maybe it's an important thing that I'd like to get done. But, you know, time is ticking. That would be a, a version of urgent. Important would be a lot of the things that I normally do. Uh, a lot of the projects that I normally work on, I would usually say, are important, but then it's about ter determining levels of importance, and that eventually leads us to one of the common talking points that people usually end up discussing, even though you might not want to, and I especially don't, which is what to cut. When you get to a point where you just have so much on your plate, you might start to think this isn't being very efficient. Uh, I am not able to spend my time doing all of these things. I don't have the ability to do all of these things. So what am I supposed to do? Well, you might have to eventually start cutting parts of that list. Now that you have that list all together and you've been able to prioritize what is indeed uh, important and what's urgent, you might be able to find out what's not important or what's at the lower end of importance for you. And then you might have to cut some stuff. 
And it's a scary prospect. And I think one of the reasons why it's scary for a lot of people who are in creative endeavors is because if you start cutting out those creative endeavors, you might start to find that you've cut out all the things that are, you know, creative in general. And it's like a stepping stone to just the elimination of doing anything creative whatsoever. But the, the thing about it is, is that you are always going to want to do something creative. But if you can't wrap your head around everything, you're doing nothing. So starting to just deal with the fact that, hey, this series that I was working on isn't really going anywhere or doesn't seem to really be doing anything, and maybe it's not a priority for me, uh, I probably shouldn't keep doing it. Once in a while now, I might do an attempting to play, but it's very infrequent, because I started to realize that it's really not that important. What am I really trying to do when it came to video games? Well, I, I wanted to talk about video games, and I really like doing that. That's actually a priority for me, is being able to have a forum to do that. Normally, I can't do that on Delph, we want to talk about tabletop gaming more than anything else. And we might reference video games, but it's not really the sole focus. So if, if I want to do that as a priority, I'm probably going to have to do a series that's about that. And so that's really why I've been doing a lot of the Citanium Mine episodes, if you've been on the website. Because that's just a forum where I get to take one game that I played recently and talk about that and what it does and why it either works or doesn't work and other games that are similar to it that might be better or done in a different way that you might like more. Similarly, uh, there was Orbital. And uh, Orbital is still a, a show that I do, but I haven't done one in a very long time. And I think the reason was that even though it is important, I never considered it to be urgent. And more than that, it is one of the harder projects I have to work on. You might not realize it, but it actually does take a fair amount of research for some of those episodes. And then it is also a, it, it's an interview show I do by myself. So it takes a lot of time to try and figure out what voices are going to sound like, what characters are going to be like. Uh, it, it's a lot of work. And if you're not really inspired to do it at a certain time in a certain place, it can feel like a workload in and of itself. If it was really the only thing I was doing, it might be a little bit easier. But when you have other things that you might consider higher priorities, it becomes something that you're not interested in doing as often. And so it's something I know I'm going to go back to, but I'm not going to go back to it right away. Videos, another thing, because videos do take a long time to do, so I'm trying to learn how to do priorities in that and cut a lot of things that just didn't work. Some series I started worked really well and did very well. And so I realized, okay, well, maybe I should be focusing more on doing those things. But then there's the other component of, does, as Marie Kondo might say, does it bring joy? Uh, and if it doesn't really bring joy and it feels too stressful to do, I might still not want to do it. And if it's something that I'm going to have to do on a frequency that I can't really keep up, I might not want to do it. Frequency is also a big thing, especially in digital media, which is what we're actually engaging in right this second. But if you've made that consistency too frequent and you can't keep that up, you're in trouble. You're in deep trouble. And so I haven't had a video come out for a little while. And that's a little nerve wracking because if you don't have a video come out on a regular basis, uh, YouTube hates you <laughs> and so and wonders why you're not providing free content for its network. And so trying to figure out what you're going to do with that in a timely fashion and on a regular basis is something that goes into priorities as well. And so when you have a lot of things that you've all prioritized as urgent and then uh, a tree, for instance, falls on your, I don't know, car. The most efficient person in the world, when you then put more stuff on that plate, is not going to be as efficient. You can try to prioritize and schedule every single moment of your day, like every single minute. Just make sure that you're, you, know, you, you schedule it directly. But what happens is, then, tree, car, and then what? then what do you do? <laughs> well, your schedule kind of goes right out the window. High efficiency uh, is a problem 
when you have any kind of crisis come along. Because the second a crisis comes along, your high efficiency can't be high efficiency anymore. You have no time to deal with that. So what do you do when the real world throws stuff that is urgent at you? You're not really able to focus on things that you thought were urgent before. And it might feel exhaustive to do that. Which on the last episode, I talked about fatigue, which is kind of part and parcel to that. But when you actually get to the work, the first thing that helps is actually figuring out the priority. This also works for game design, which is one of the reasons I wanted to talk about it on this episode, which is that if you're working on an RPG, if you're working on any kind of a project, before you even get into the game design, prioritizing how you're going to build it or when you're going to be able to build it, what time you're going to be able to use for it, what parts you want to work on first, is going to be one of the biggest keys to that. That's not even just a, a game design thing. That's just a, a design of designers sort of issue, which I guess this, this like monologue thing that I've been doing over the last couple episodes, it kind of feels like that. It, it's, a, it's about a much more broad idea of design in terms of how to, to craft designers to do the design work. Because, you know, I'm the best person to talk about organization. I'm so good at it. You have, you have no idea. Uh, that's why, without uh, really thinking too much about it, ended up missing two whole weeks of Delve because there was a tree. And also I was working on other things and was like, oh, no, wait, the main thing that I do. I didn't do that. That's a problem. I need to do the main thing that I do. <laughs> So I can't say that I myself am very good at that whole priority list, uh, because really the priority list, when it comes to the work, really should have Delve at the top, and then I forgot about that, because I didn't think about lists, and then everything else was there too, and then I couldn't really do any of that either, so that was a problem. And so that's why I'm thinking that over the course of time, design becomes more about actual prioritization and workflow than it becomes about the actual design. You have to think so much about the how of it rather than the what of it. I have to think more about how I spend my time than what I'm going to build in that time frame. So I guess that's just what I wanted to say, that um, priorities and how you prioritize data can be, in many ways, more important and more vital to productivity than the actual product that you're making. And it's easy to overlook that when you're very much in the weeds, uh, in the trees, and you can't see the forest from the trees, and then all the trees fall over. And all of a sudden, you can absolutely see the forest because it's, it's all down around you because a wind blew through and, and knocked all the trees down. And now there are no trees and there's, there's no forest either. Again, I'm not like talking from any kind of experience or anything. Hey, thank you for listening to this episode. And um, if you want to hear more uh, episodes where I am not just uh, talking to myself, you can, or if you want to hear episodes where I do, because we have those as well, you can go to DelveCast.com. Make sure to click on our Patreon banner. I've been trying to put anything that we do up there first uh, so that you can uh, hear it early and uh, get a little bit of a preview of some of the stuff. And, and sometimes I put stuff up there that I normally wouldn't use as regular content as well. So something to think about. I want to thank our Shiny Level patrons. I want to thank Nick and I want to thank Bonnie Ainsworth. Uh, for being with us. I also want to thank Cannibal Halfling for being one of our new uh, patrons. Thank you for joining us. And of course to Drunk Paul for essentially being a shiny level patron by boosting our Discord channel. So thank you to everybody out there that has helped me and, and Alex and everybody here at Delft know that this is a priority worth having. You can also follow us on social media. I am at Citanium, Alex is at EXP Limited, and the show is at Delve Podcast. We're not always uh, very active over there, but it is also a really good way to get notified when we have new episodes come up because we will always relay it over on that 
platform as well as on our Facebook page, which is just Delvecast if you're over there. Uh, so it will go out there so you know that we have new posts. So uh, literally anything that we do, and it's it's all on Delvecast anyway, will be relayed on those social networks. So if you follow us there, you'll know. All right, I think that that's uh, good for today. Uh, thank you for joining me. And uh, I'll see you next time on the Titanium Mine. Nope, wrong show. Prioritize something wrong there. Delve. Delve is what I'm doing right now. I have too many projects. That's really the lesson. That's that basically that's the takeaway here. Too many projects. Got to figure out how to not have so many projects, <laughs> or work on other people's projects and not have my own. No, that's just going to be more projects. It's a vicious cycle. It's a vicious cycle. Thank you for joining me. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.